Hi everybody, it's Christopher Naiman, back for a tip of the day. How many of you enjoy doing heirloom sewing? How many of you have ever done heirloom sewing with metallic thread? And how many of you have ever done heirloom sewing with metallic thread on fabric beyond cotton batiste? Well, stick with me for the tip of the day and I'm going to show you some cool techniques with metallic threads, a wing needle, and some home deck fabric. Stay with me. Welcome back everybody, it's Christopher Naiman. Okay, so now we're gonna take some home deck fabric to, to do some samples on, and all my tips of the day are techniques I'm teaching you. So it's up to your creative mind to do what you want to create with, okay? So I'm here to give you all these tips and tricks. So now I've got my, my uh, um, home deck fabric. You can also use bottom weight fabric, which is really cool. So I cut a strip of fabric here, and one important thing when you're doing heirloom sewing, and many of you know this, is you have to beef that fabric up. You have to starch it. And you're going to spray starch on it, let it soak in, and then run your iron and dry it up so it has that little bit of a cardboard feel to it. And don't worry, when you wash it, it'll come out and soften up for you, but you need that stability for all those, um, that compound amount of thread, and the, the decorative stitching that's being done, and the holes being punched in this to maintain that heirloom stitch. Okay? All right, let's move on. What is heirloom sewing? According to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia online, heirloom sewing is a collection of needlework techniques that arose in the last quarter of the 20th century that imitates fine French hand sewing of the period 1890 to 1920, using a sewing machine and manufactured trims. However, you can also make your own trims. Heirloom sewing is characterized by the fine, often sheer, usually white cotton or linen fabrics trimmed with an assortment of lace insertion, tucks, narrow ribbon, and smocking, imitating such handwork techniques as white work embroidery, bodice, and hem stitching. Okay, so, but are you limited to those type of fabrics only? Heck no. You've got all these incredible decorative stitches. You've got all these amazing new types of fabrics to work with. What you're looking at right now is a christening gown I made for my nephew. This is over 17 years old. And there's a lot of techniques done in this. As you can see, there's um, pin tucking. There is a lot of uh, trimming that was attached, lacing. Um, the outer dress of this was done in a sheer. Uh, there, there is a lot of... Uh, really cool techniques. There's their serger pin tucks on here. So heirlooming is basically today, it's all these decorative stitches and you can still do it on the traditional fabrics as explained in Wikipedia, but we like to go beyond. We like to experiment and go beyond and say what else can we make using all these fancy decorative stitches on our sewing machine? And what other types of fabrics would it work on? And what other type of threads can we use? So let's move over to the sewing machine and discuss that. When doing hem stitching, what you need to use is called a hem stitch needle, or otherwise known as a wing needle. As you can see, the needle is very wide throughout the body. What that does is, it as it goes through the fabric, it's, it's pu putting a hole in it. And with hem stitches, uh, the, the, the uh, stitching is repeated several times as it's going through its process of making that decorative stitch. So that's the first thing that we use when we're doing some hem stitching for heirloom sewing. Now traditionally you're using cotton batiste or a cotton blend fabric or mostly cotton fabric. Um, you're going to use a fine cotton thread and when you use a decorative stitch, an heirloom decorative stitch, you can see as in this sample um, it pokes holes through the fabric, which gives it the name hem stitching. It's a really cool technique, and any light or any other color fabric behind it will, sh will show through. And as you can see, I'm going to move this light around here. 
Okay, there it is there like that. And then you can see that when I shine this light to the side of it, you can see all the holes that are through it. And I have the green fabric behind there, so you can see the green coming through it. It's a really cool process. So what happens if we do that? And as I showed you in the beginning of this video, what happens if we do it on a non-traditional material with metallic thread? Okay, so what happens if we take the traditional material and do the metallic thread? It gives a little more of a luster to it. And there are several different types of metallic threads that you can use to make this, do this process. So it's really, really quite a, quite a cool technique. And, you know, no one really explores it to go beyond just the traditional techniques or the traditional threads or fabrics. So I'm going to show you some techniques on the sewing machine and how to get this look. On some, we'll, we'll start with the traditional fabric and then we'll, in the traditional way, and then we're going to go to the more modern way. Okay, so we're going to start with showing you the traditional stitching. And I'm going to be doing the hem stitching, as, which is part of the heirloom sewing. Normally you would use cotton thread um, to do this with your wing needle, but I don't have fine cotton thread. <laughs> and I know a lot of you out there know I'm a big thread collector, but that's one type of thread I've never really used because I'm always into my fancy threads and things and my heavier duty threads. So I found an alternative that works absolutely wonderful. I'm using bobbin thread for embroidery. This is very, very fine. It has to be for embroidery, and it's got a good strength to it, too, for this, and it holds up really well. So this is what we're going to be using. Now, um, going back to ironing, starch, 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 starch. You have to really stiffen, and if you listen to this, you can hear how stiff it is. I mean, it's a pretty stiff fabric, and I used um, spray starch, and I also uh, went out and got some of the, the starch in the blue bottle, and I'll show you a picture of that. So, and I, and I, I put in the spray spray a spray canister and spray, or, you know, a spray bottle, and I uh, sprayed it. Let it soak. You've got to let this soak in, and I'd say a good 15-20 minutes and then hit it with some steam and then your iron. If you try to iron it right away after you starch it, you're going to scorch your iron, okay? Even though the starches are nice today, you still have to give it time to soak into the fibers. So let's, let's look at some um, decorative stitches on the screen. Okay, so looking at my computer screen on my, on my sewing machine, I'm up on the, at the uh, utility stitches and I'm going to go and touch the heirloom decorative stitches and there's all these different decorative stitches on this one page. And you're going to see pin stitches, you're going to see all kinds of fun decorative stitching on here. Um, I love heirloom. I absolutely love heirloom stitches because they really are so awesome. And you know it's really funny, it's like when we do embroidery, the embroidery designs that look like cartoons don't look that way when you stitch them out. So this is what we're going to be doing, and let's just start with the one decorative stitch that I had done already, just so I can show you, and that's going to be this little star. So we're going to do that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my width as wide as it'll go, and I'm going to increase my length as long as it'll go, okay? So I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to begin stitching I'm using that decorative stitch, and in a moment I'm going to get you a close-up of showing you how this needle uh, keeps repeating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to create those holes. So let me get you a close-up of this and you can see it. So here is what I just stitched. If I hold it up over here by the light, you can see all those beautiful holes. Isn't that nice? And here it is up here, what it looks like normally. And it came out just so pretty. 
just really, really pretty. Uh, I just love the way this holds. Imagine all the different kind of projects you could put this in. You know, the, traditionally they make it little girls' dresses, christening gowns. Um, what if you did this, you know, like, and they also make it on um, little napkins, handkerchiefs, all that stuff. All that cute heirloom stuff that, you know, they're making up. But imagine if you were to put this in your own dress on uh, using the different type of fabrics. But anyway, this is the traditional way of doing it. So let me start, let me do a different decorative stitch now. Let's go over to the computer screen. And let's select another decorative stitch. Let's select this one. Let's see what that one will do. And let's increase our stitch length all the way. I like, I like long and wide because a lot of things I make are larger. So let's see what that one does. Let's put this down. I can zoom in here and sew this for you. And you can also see how imperative it is to have that fabric starched. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm trying to hold the fabric straight while I hold the camera at the same time, so forgive me if things get a little off here. This is a homemade production for you. This isn't a sold DVD, so all right, so let's just see that. Okay, and let's look at this decorative stitch here. Oh, that's a pretty one. That's a pretty one. We bring it to the light here and hold it up and look at it through the light. Let's see. There we go. It's a pretty one too. So now if we look at the different um, look at the different ones here. There is the first one. Isn't that pretty? Now we're gonna scroll down here, we move it down here, and here is the other one I just did. Very pretty. Very cool. And see how nice and flat that fabric stays because it's a starch so well? Okay, now let's do this with metallic thread. Okay, a couple things I want to point out to you is never ever use your automatic needle threader when you have a wing needle in here or your, what they call hem stitch needle. If I refer to this as a wing needle because that's what they use normally, they call it. Um, never, never, never because you're going to ruin your automatic needle threader. There's no way it's going to work in here. Also, I have metallic thread I'm using and I have metallic thread in the bobbin. So I'm using some Madeira, Madeira metallic thread. So you can see it's in the bobbin. And up here on my thread tower, I have it up there. You can watch my metallic thread video tips on how to use this and set it up. So now we're going to do that decorative stitch, the last one we just did. And we're gonna do it on, on this uh, fabric here on black and see how it looks with the metallic thread on black. Okay, now let's go ahead and switch. Let's switch to a different metallic stitch. A very, a very popular one is this one. And let's go all the way out. I'm increasing the stitch width and length. Normally always do because I use a thicker thread too. So let's turn it out. Oh boy. Nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. Well, let's check that out. Oh wow, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that just beautiful? So beautiful. And then look at this one. Wow. Can we say, wow. Nice, huh? So those are some tips for ideas for using it. Okay, now for all those who know me, you know one of my favorite metallic threads is this opal color sliver thread by Salky. Let's see what happens on that last stitch that I just did with the gold. Let's see what happens with this sliver thread. Now I changed the bobbin 
and I put the uh, white embroidery bobbin thread in. And I'm dying. I can't wait to see what this is going to look like. All right, so let me cut the thread on that. And let's see. Ooh, that is so pretty. Where's it at here? Look at that. Look at that. I know it's hard to see in the camera, but I'm telling you what, this, this just, it just sparkles. It just sparkles so beautiful. That is so pretty. Look at that. And if I, if I put it out of focus, look how it even sparkles more if I try to put it out of focus. Look at that. That's out of focus. See all those holes? It's just gorgeous. All right, let's try it on white. Let's try it on the white traditional fabric here and see what happens. What will it look like on this white cotton? Do any of you use, have been, seriously though, have, you know, I'd like to know if any of you use metallic threads when you're doing your heirloom sewing, because I really don't see much of it being used out there. And you can see how I'm using this. And notice my thread is not breaking because of my setup. I, I, you know, in many of my videos, I talk about proper setup for metallic threads. And look, I'm using a wing needle for this sliver flat metallic thread. Okay, let's cut the thread and look at this in the white. See what it looks like in the white. Oh, how pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Can you imagine making this like if you're making a white blouse and you want to put this around the cuffs of your of your sleeve um, or around the neckline, your collar? That is just beautiful. The metallic thread is just so pretty. Just so pretty, and see the holes that the fat that the wing needle puts in. So you know what I'm trying to do here is show you to step out of the box. You know they're making all these threads, all these different threads, and you know tradition is made for a reason. Um, people don't know why. Well, there's a quick little story. I'm sure you all know the story. Uh, husband and wife got married. The wife at Easter time is cutting the end of the ham off to put it in the pan, and the husband says, "Why do you cut the end of the ham off?" She says, "My mom did. It's a tradition." So the next day at Easter time, um, he says to the mother-in-law, Hey, Mom, why do you cut the end of the ham off? He goes, Well, my mother did it. It's a tradition. So he goes to the great-grandma in the other room, and he says to her, He goes, Why do you cut the end of the ham off? I heard it's a tradition. She goes, A tradition? She goes, I never had a pan big enough. So we often wonder why tradition is done like it is, and who says we can't change? I hope this gives you some great inspiration here to try different things. Okay, so let's try one more decorative heirloom stitch. We're going to do the one that looks like a railroad track. Okay, let's try that one. And let's see how this one comes out. And I already tried this earlier and I thought this was just so cool. Now, when you're doing heirloom sewing or you're going to be piecing things, the, the idea is you do strips strips of decorative stitching and they're called insertion strips and you insert them between two pieces of lace or other decorative stitching or pin tucking and that's the whole idea of heirloom. Heirloom is a bunch of strips of different types of materials uh, sewn together and that's what gives it that really cool look. So like I said if you're doing garment construction for yourself you could do this on a cuff, you could do this on a collar, you do it at the end of a, a, a ja of your blouse or something that you make a, a you know like a shirt. All right, I'm going crooked here because I'm trying to hold everything. That should be enough. Let's try that. Are you ready to see this? Oh, look at that! Look at that! Ooh, isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? So you see. The sky is the limit. And that was that sliver thread that I love to use so much. That sulky sliver thread. Just beautiful. <laughs> That's the fun part of sewing, my friends. Testing out all those fancy decorative stitches. Making something unique. Something unique and different. And stepping out of the box, trying different threads. Different needle like this one, the wing needle. It just, um, you know, you could take a traditional method and make it contemporary 
and add it into so much.